my name is Erica from the exclusive house of London. If you was to see me in the streets, address me as Erica. And this is the outpour of my story. My coming out story, okay. It's a long story, but I'm gonna give y'all all of it. I had a friend named Antoine that lived in my building at the time. I'm from Brooklyn, New York, born and raised. Um, a friend of mine who was the same age as me, I was 14 at the time, he told me one day, he said, let's go to the village. Let's get on the train, the J train, to the village. And I'm like, okay, work. The village sound bad. Let's go. We get there, I see all these people who just look happy. I see these tall girls, and the girls is who got me. Because once I seen these girls, I, once I seen these girls, I just knew it was something about them that I wanted to do as well. One night in the summertime in the village, I ran into this lady. Her name is Monica. At the time, her name was Monica Angel. She, she came up to me and she said to me, you're really pretty and I want to put you in drags and make you my daughter. And I'm looking at this lady like, girl, you crazy. I'm not getting in drags. I can't even go home. I would never be able to go home like that. But um, she gave me her number and for something told me to just call her. So I called her the very next morning like, I want to come hang out with you. So I went to meet her at her house. She lived in Brooklyn as well. Uh, I went to meet her at her house and she said, I'm going downtown Brooklyn to go get my hair done. Come with me. I went with her, we got on the train, we, we went there. This is, mind you, I'm hanging out with this girl. I, I don't know her from nowhere. I just, I want to get to know her. There's something about her that's just like exciting me. So um, she takes me downtown Brooklyn to the hair salon. Um, she said her friend Kevin worked there at the time. Well, that was Kevin, legendary Kevin, uh, Angel Karan. So we got down to the uh, shop. There's a few people in the shop. Uh, one person that was in the shop, he was getting his hair done. He had this long, jet black, pretty hair. Um, Monica introduced me to him. His, that was Eric Christian Bazaar. He was throwing a ball later on that night. And he asked Monica, are you going to bring her to the ball? Because she is gorgeous. Like, put her in drag to come to help walk my ball. Monica said, that's my plan. So she gives me the flyer. I take the flyer home. And um, before I leave the house to go to her house to meet her so she can start preparing me for the ball, I leave the flyer on my bed in my bedroom. Not thinking anything of it. And uh, we go to the ball, I walk the ball. This is my very first ball. I walk, push queen up and drags, real this, everyday real this. And I won, I snatched grand prize at this ball. Everybody's living for me at the ball. Everybody's like, who is she? I wanna know her, like, who is she? Anyway, the ball is over. Here's the gag, y'all ready? So I'm walking out the ball. The first people I see, as soon as I hit the pavement, is my aunt, my uncle, and two of my cousins, they immediately noticed me. And I noticed them as soon as they seen me, I just took off running. And my, my gay mother, Monica, is screaming like, Miss Erica, where are you going? And I'm just running, I just, I hit it. And I'm downtown Brooklyn in full drags, a young 14 year old boy in full gowns. When I tell you, beat. So I end up, finding a diner, I goes inside the diner and I'm like, what do I do? How do I, I'm not gonna be able to go home. Like, oh my God, they just see me in full gowns and full drag. Anyway, so I was thinking like, how did they know? So then I thought about it, it hit me. They found the flyer, they wanted to gag me. So my family sits me down in the living room and they just, my aunt, she tells me like, listen, if this is what you wanna do, we're gonna do it, and we're gonna do it the right way. You look gorgeous, you look beautiful. Once she said that, that was the beginning of Erica. I said, this is it, this is what I'm gonna do. So that's how I came out. I didn't actually come out by sitting my family down and telling them I'm gay or I'm trans. I came out immediately as the girls. They seen me and they, they seen me as the girls. So there was no, I, I didn't have this, the, I never had the stages of being butch queen in the scene. 
then transform into a girl. No, I just came out straight as a girl. That I was trans on the inside. I just didn't know what trans was. Mm -hmm. But I knew it was something. I didn't feel like a man. I didn't feel like a guy. And even when I tried to be a guy, like in the, in the hood, because I'm from the hood, hands down. When I tried to be a guy, it's like everyone always say, you're too pretty. Like, you're gay. Something. Mm -mm. You're gay. And I used to be like, why do you keep saying this? I'm trying my hardest to be regular. Like, I got girlfriends. I got... But it just wasn't working. So I just always knew I was supposed to be a woman. My first category in ballroom was Butch Queen and Drag's Realness. I was um, slaying realness for about two years straight from 2002 to about 2004. Um, I was up the year 2003 in New York City for Drags Realness of the Year, and I was also nominated in Philadelphia for Drags Realness of the Year. Um, I then transitioned to Fem Queen Realness in late 2004. Because I'm, I'm moaning now, I'm looking softer, so now I'm gonna play with the Fem Queen. So, um, I saw walking Fem Queen Realness in 2004. I was, it was, it was cute, it was boring, but it was cute. Everybody was like, Erica, you should walk face, Erica, you should walk face. I didn't think that I was able to walk face because the girls that I looked at walking face, they was like the bells of the wall. So, Pony said to me, you and Courtney is gonna walk face at the PLC seat ball. I know that that's a big ball, and I know the girls walk that ball. But at the PLCC ball, they have legendary Fem Queen face, and they have regular Fem Queen face. So I felt more comfortable. I'm like, I'm not going to be battling this Tempest and all those girls. And I'm going to battle the girls that's like right here with me. Uh, me and Jasmine ended up being the last battle. So once I seen that I was able to do that, and, I, and the people was living, I'm like, okay, this is what I'm going to walk now. Come to the Icon Ball, Paris, Muglia walk, Courtney, she was still a Zion, she walked, and me, I walked. Slay, slurp, serve them both, loved them down, ate them up, now I'm a law. So I'm just feeling bad now. Um, well, my stay in prison was very hard. I'm like I said in the beginning, I'm from the streets. I I know how to handle myself in situations. I know how to deal with men, homophobic men, gangsters. I know how to deal with all of that because that's where I come from. Up there, there's a lot of white, all the officers are white. They like rednecks, like braces. One of them I met had a tattoo of a black baby with a noose around her neck. It was feet. But anyway, I'm in this prison. The officers don't know what to do with me. Like, I guess they've never seen nothing like myself. And the facility was saying that I was causing too much of a disturbance. So the day when they came to me and told me, we're going to be putting you in solitary confinement, I refused. I said to them, like, I'm not going in there. I didn't ask for that. I'm like... I don't need that. No, he didn't say girl. He said, mister, you're going wherever we want to take you. And I'm like, first of all, you're going to call me how you see it. Like, my name is Erica. You see my name. Like, don't do that. So I'm talking to them nicely. They nasty. This, this man spit on me. The officer spit on me. So I already knew from there I was going to go. I was going to be forced to solitary confinement so I put up a fight and as we going through all of that that scuffle I got so injured to the point where my right breast implant got ruptured and they finally get me into solitary confinement so now I'm asking them for medical attention and they refusing to give me medical attention because they know that they done did something wrong and so they have me locked in this cell for three days so I, I asked uh, the night shift officer which he was really cool because he used to come to my cell at night time and um, ask me if I, if I was okay but I would tell him I need medical attention and he'd say I'm not gonna I can't do that because I, that's that's what they told me not to do but I can give you pen and paper I said okay give me the pen and paper so I took the pen and paper I wrote a letter to Kelly, who's my gay mother now. Somehow, some way, K 
Kelly receives this letter after I send it. She received this letter like two days later. And I, I guess from what the people were telling me is that she made it a really big thing online. She's genders in jail. I have seen it done to other men in jail. They are beat. They are dragged out the house, thrown in the back of the van, beat again all the way to the box, denied medical treatment and everything until they cut and they scars and everything held up in the fucking box. I am not going to let this be swept underneath the rug with my daughter. This girl has been beat. She has been attacked and everything. I urge you, if you people are really here for the shit, Please share my life. Please share my life. Share my video. I know the pain that my daughter went through. She started this Justice for Erica thing. And um, uh, two days later, the um, lieutenant, the deputy, um, IG, which is the investigators bureau for the officers, they all come to the cell that I was in, in solitary confinement, and they asked me, they, they brings me out this cell, that's number one. They takes me to the doctor, they took me to the hospital to get um, x-rays and all that on my breast, and they like, listen, we so sorry this happened to you, can you uh, file a, a complaint right now, write a statement, we need the officer's names, and we need all of that, we're gonna get you up out of here. Any girl that ends up going to prison, this is what you're going to endure. Because they don't know, they not they don't they're not trained to give you your hormone therapy. They not they not trained it's trans um, since they ain't do no trans sensitivity training. They didn't do any of that, so they don't know. So I was released from prison April 2018. Thank God. I come home from prison and I hear that they filming a show. It's gonna be a gay show about ballroom on FX called Pose. They still filming this and this is the first season. So I get a call just out of nowhere. I get a call from a friend of mine whose name is Genovia. She's from the House of Lampin. She calls me and she's like, Erica, we need um we need you to come to Pose. Come out here to Pose and walk the Fem Queen face category. No, actually it was not Fem Queen face. It was the Mother of the Year category against Electra, which is Tyra Muglia. So I'm like, oh work. So I go, this is like three months after after me being home. I go there, I walks the category. Of course, hey that Electra when she's the star of the show. So I started talking to my gay father who's Michi Lambin. Me and Michi been talking way before I even went to prison. Michi been telling me, yeah, come to the house. You can come to the house. But I was not, I didn't want to come to the house. I was in Mizrahi and I was living for the house of Mizrahi. So now that the Mizrahis is switching and becoming gorgeous Gucci's, I give Michi the call and I'm like, Father, I'm ready to come to the house of Lauren Ben. Because I know Lauren Ben is a fashion house. When you think of Lauren Ben, you think of their fashion people. What other ball? What's, what's the best ball to debut you at walking this new category? And it was the Muglia ball. So, the Muglia ball comes up, and I walk high fashion streetwear. And after the Muglia ball, a week later, Hershey Lampin calls me, and he's like, Erica, we need, they doing a show called Legendary. We need a mother for the house. And I'm like, okay, um, where's the show going to be sh um, showing at? He said HBO, once he said HBO, I was like, get on my number now. I'm ready. I'm like, that's all you need to say. So he connected me with the people from HBO. They started calling me and I'm like, oh, this is real. They calling me. So now I know that it's me, Michaela, Zay Zay, Pack Rat, and Carlos. Those are my peoples. I already those have been my peoples before then. So I get on legendary and I mean from the time I came home from prison till now, it's like I did a complete 360. Like, I'm not, before I went to prison, yes, I was doing all the wrong things. <laughs> I was doing all the wrong things. I was doing everything I can 
to make a fast dollar. And a lot of it was illegal. So when I say you do the crime, you do the time. I mean that. So after I came, once I came home, I had a point to prove to myself, like, you are somebody and you are worth it, baby. Like, you don't, that's not a place you want to end up at. So come home and hop on everything moving. And that's what I did. And that's what I'm still doing. And that's what I'm going to continue doing. When you go away from ballroom, for, when you take a break, if you go to prison or you just say, no, I just need to focus on myself, the ballroom forgets about you. And when you finally do a return, if you want them to live for you how they lived for you before, if they did live for you before, you got to really go hard and make an impact, make a statement. Me, when I came home from prison, I walked. The first ball I walked was um, the ball from Throwbacks ball. I walked Femme Queen face, and I walked Legendary face that night, mind you. My first time walking Legendary face, I walked Legendary face, and I won. And then I came back at the Heritage ball, walked Legendary Femme Queen face again, and won. It's not like I wasn't putting in work. Like, they didn't forget about me. I did hear some people say, oh, they giving it to her, they living for her because of the justice for Erica. That's her justice right there. And I'm like, bitch, what? <laughs> That's not my justice. My justice is me really like putting work in. Let me give y'all some tea on legendary. <laughs> for the girls that's gonna, let me take me a sip. Hold on. For the girls that's going to be on season two, be prepared. They make it look like the balls are once a week. No, baby. You have two days to put together choreography. You have two days to put together wardrobe. Two days to get your... You have to do your own music. And you can't use music that's someone else's music. So you have to make beats yourself. And you only have two days to do all this, mind you. We should have won. The House of Lamb Vince should have won the whole thing. We are the only house that won. Five, no, four superior houses, house trophies. We are the only house that won a large amount of cash on the whole show. The house that won the show didn't win anything. My life since Legendary, after Legendary, oh my God, I'm like the local celebrity. Anywhere I go, anywhere I go, someone is noticing me like, did your mother land then? And I'm like, oh my God, like in the mall, Uber drivers, I had, let me tell y'all about this one time. This is in, this is this summer that just passed. I'm walking down Fulton Street. It's a little boy, he was 12 years old. He noticed me and he starts screaming and hollering. His mother looking at him like, what What are you screaming and hollering at? And then she see that he's looking at me, like screaming and hollering and she looks at me. The mother looks at me like, I thought she must have clocked my tea. She got into my tea because the mother looked like, bitch, like what did you just do to my son? But I'm like, no. I didn't do anything to your son, so I'm looking at him. He's looking at me and he's like, that's Erica from the TV, Erica from the TV. And I'm like, oh, he see my show. So I take, I'm like, I'll take a picture with your son. She let me take a picture with him. I hugged him, it was fab. It's like everywhere I go, everywhere I go, someone is noticing me, no matter where. Now I moved to, I'm new here in Atlanta. I go to the malls here in Atlanta and the people was like, Oh my God, I seen you on the show, Legendary. Y'all should've won, y'all should've won. So I'm like, like, I'm like a local celebrity now. The Lon Vin campaign, it was to relaunch the fall winter line. So the fashion house Lon Vin Paris reached out to the Lan Vins that was on the show from Legendary. They wanted to, um, they like from one, from one house of Lon Ben to the real house of Lon Ben, they call themselves the real house of Lon Ben, to the real house of Lon Ben, we want to work closely with y'all. We've seen what y'all did on the show and y'all was amazing. Thank you for using our name. Uh -uh -uh. So we is excited. We like, Lon Ben wants to work with us. The real Lon Ben wants to work with us. So we connected um, Lon Ben Paris to like the overall parents of the house. They took control of everything because once they found out it was not just five of us in the house, there's a whole house of us because they was actually focusing on just the five of us at first until they found out it's a whole house of Lon Ben, it's not just us. So now they're like, no, we want the whole house. We want everybody. So they told them to pick, I think it was 25 people from the house, including us five from Legendary. 
So they did that. We did this campaign. We was in all day full winter pieces, head to toe. It was sickening. We shot the commercial and the London store in New York and so it was fab. That was an amazing experience. After the shoot came out, after the commercial came out, Vogue magazine reposted it. Um, there were there was actually people from Vogue at the shoot. They was interviewing us on the side, taking pictures of us. Some of those pictures and interviews came out, mine came out in the magazine. Um I did an interview with L magazine after that. And they think me the mother of all mothers. This is a beautiful thing. Everything that we are able to do nowadays. Because these are things that the girls, our ancestors, like Octavia St. Laurent, Carmen, Extravaganza, all the, even Willie, he wanted to take ballroom overseas. Like, he, he said that in uh, Paris is Burning. He wanted to take ballroom to, to overseas. But now they have ballroom overseas. They're the House of Ninja overseas. So I know he's proud. But for those girls that was trying, they wanted to be models. They, they dream was to be models, the biggest models in the world. And um, I just feel like we are finishing their work. And it's an, it's an amazing thing. If I could give my 14 year old self any advice today, that advice would be believe in yourself, Miss Erica. I mean, like you don't you don't have to look for validation from no one. You know you got it, you know you can do it. Believe in yourself. And maybe I would not have made some of the choices I've made in my life. Um, but that would be the number one thing I would tell myself is believe in yourself because at times I used to see myself not thinking that I was good enough and that stopped a lot of things for me, but Believe in yourself, girl. You got it. I am the legendary Erica Lonvin. This is my story, and I'm sticking to it.